as a general rule, we tend to favor quality over quantity. But there's something to be said for quantity. Hey folks, it's been a hot minute since I did a video talking broadly about LGBTQIA plus representation in film and television. And I think I want to come back and do that again. So part of the reason I haven't tackled this topic in a while is by and large, I usually am either dealing with super specific incidences, usually because somebody screwed up, or I'm talking broad overarching trends, tropes, and lending a perspective to the general concept. And there's only so many broad strokes to be made before you need to get a bit more granular than that. And as I said, I tend not to unless I've got something really specific to say. So I want to try and offer what will seem on its face a really foolishly simplistic answer to the question of how do we get better LGBTQIA plus representation. Have more of it. I told you it sounds foolishly simple and reductive and like, what, that's it? Well, good. No, that's not it. But also, yeah, kinda. See, here's the thing. The less you have of representation of any kind, be it LGBTQIA plus people, be it disabled people, be it fat people, be it people of color, indigenous people, whatever it might be, the fewer instances you have, the more pressure gets put on each instance. The, um, let's go with punditary left, those of us who are left-leaning and speak on media, we're notoriously nitpicky. And for every instance of quote-unquote good representation you might find, even if it is largely praised by people like me in the position that I am in, you're going to find at least a couple of outliers picking apart something wrong with it. And I don't just mean people looking to stir up nonsense, and I'm definitely not talking about the anti-woke crowd who just slam all of it. I'm talking about people from within this community who go, okay, yeah, but. And the thing is, they're usually right. You can't have a character that lands with everybody that appeals to everybody, that speaks to the experience of everybody, that takes everything into account and is then also successful as a character. I mean, you just can't. But you shouldn't have to. And sometimes I really get the feeling, because I, I get the frustration from certain creators, um, performers, writers, whatever it may be. I sense a certain frustration when they get criticism from the community they're depicting, especially if they themselves are a member of that community. Oftentimes they will write a um, character that is representative of their own experience and then get told, well, that's problematic because of X, Y, and Z. And those criticisms might be fair, but that shouldn't be taken as a negation of somebody's own experience being placed into a character. But I get that frustration, I do. But the reason everything gets, frankly, over-examined, the reason why the most mainstream exposure that LGBTQIA plus characters get gets over-scrutinized by everybody, especially folks like me from within the community, is because there isn't enough of it. Think of it like a bed of nails. If you don't know the principle by which you are able to lay down on a bed of nails, I'll explain it. It's a distribution of pressure because when your body weight is distributed across hundreds, if not thousands of individual points, while any single one of those points is sharp enough to do some significant damage to your body, you distribute the weight, you distribute the pressure, and you are fine. I've lain on a bed of nails, actually. It's not comfortable enough to sleep on, but it's fine. However, the fewer and fewer nails you have, the more pressure gets put on each individual nail, on each individual instance of representation. 
And suddenly, all the pressure is on a handful of things. I actually talked about this broad concept years ago. I don't think I'd even come out yet on the channel. I definitely wasn't presenting like this. I think at all, definitely not on a regular basis. When I talked about the reception to Wonder Woman and how there was a really odd kind of internal struggle going in, going on between people I think largely agreed in the broad strokes about what they do and don't like about cinema and what they would or wouldn't like to see about representation of women as superheroes. But what some of the people who I knew found is that they kind of got, shamed might be the wrong word, but when they came with criticisms for Wonder Woman, they, they felt like they were kind of getting, shh, don't bring that up, let us have this kind of a feel, just because something about the movie or the character didn't fully work for them. Because there was the sense of, this is the only one we have, don't tear it down. And that felt necessary to some people to defend Wonder Woman as a film and as a character to that extent, because we hadn't had a female-led superhero movie since I was either Catwoman or Elektra was the last one prior to that for major mainstream release. So yeah, there was, frankly, more pressure than should be on any one film uh, as a result of that gap and of superheroes being huge. And if this failed, there was a fear that we're not going to get any more. But of course, we are going to overanalyze. We are going to pick it apart because you can't appeal to everybody with a single character but that's why you do more. Now, I could say somewhat facetiously, <laughs> I mean, it's not like you hear people complaining about the depictions of white, cis, heterosexual men. Except you do, but that's from a crowd that I choose not to deal with as much as I can get away with. Basically, the anti-woke crowd, the ones who just complain about any diversity whatsoever, and also any time a cis white het male is not the lead, and if they can spot one in the movie who is not idealized, they will claim that the movie is making fools of men. I'm not dealing with this. I'm acknowledging that they exist. But the thing is, when we actually talk about moviegoers, not people who have made literal careers out of stoking outrage and have become what I refer to as outrage merchants. Setting those people aside for a minute, because again, I ain't dealing with them today. By and large, a film that depicts a cis, white, heterosexual, able-bodied guy in a bad way as a coward, as a villain, as a fool, whatever it may be, even if an audience member who matches all those descriptors doesn't like it, you know what? He's got literally hundreds of other things to watch that will have characters that match those same descriptors and that are done completely differently. Not so much with minorities. And this is, again, by no means true of only the LGBTQIA plus community. But that is the perspective I come at this from, being white, able-bodied. So, you know, I, I try not to talk out of turn with other issues. So I'm speaking of this through the lens of LGBTQIA plus um, representation. But keep in mind, it does absolutely apply other places. I'm just, you know, staying in my wheelhouse. <laughs> I don't want to muddy my points by saying something foolish because I, I, I just tried to come at it from an angle that I don't understand as well. You know, sometimes sticking in your, in your lane isn't about like, ah, stay out of things you don't understand. It's just about if that's not your main focus is being sure that you handle that specific aspect respectfully, uh, maybe just stick to what you do know. And that's what I'm doing here. So coming back to my original point, just have more. I know it's an odd thing to hear basically a quantity over quality argument, but the thing is, the more quantity there is, the less perfection will be demanded of every individual instance. Basically, if you want people like me off your back 
for the way that you depict LGBTQIA plus characters in your films, in your TV shows, etc. Create a world where if I don't like one, I can turn around and there's another option. That's it. The reason so much scrutiny is put on these things is because lack of options, at least in the mainstream. And I do want to emphasize that is where I'm coming at this from. You can certainly point to queer focused media and some of it is great, but by and large, it's indie, it's niche, it's small scale. And in a world where streaming services, especially that used to be a place where a smaller, more niche idea could find a home are now getting purged on a regular basis or canceled after only one or two seasons. Yeah, that isn't going to fully cut it in terms of giving us a sense of being able to see ourselves on the screen. And another reason that I focus on mainstream stuff is, call me basic if you like, I enjoy mainstream stuff. Like I talk about, you know, all these mainstream, massive, popular franchises because that's what I actually enjoy. I remember when I first started talking about this, a lot of people would bring up, you know, all these indie films that like I should be watching or I should be booing or I should be, you know, talking about and and bolstering. And I'm not saying I I don't want to do that, but the thing is, by and large, those things are small scale, small budget, usually dramas. I like action. I like science fiction. I like fantasy. Those things require budgets. They require mainstream support. That's where I go. That's where I would like to be able to see myself. And I would also point out that relegating all of the LGBTQIA plus content into a special corner for the niche content the queer content for the queer people, that doesn't really help either because representation doesn't just matter in terms of us being able to see ourselves, but also, you know, normalizing us, just having us exist. I've talked elsewhere in other videos, some of them years old. I actually should go back and see if any of those are worth redoing from from scratch. I don't know how much I stand by some of the things I've said before. I don't think I I stepped in it too badly, but you know, times change, I get older and presumably wiser. I don't know, I should recheck some of those. But anyway, I have talked uh, in other places about a lot of the specifics, you know, the ins and outs of of certain aspects and certain things that uh, are to be kept in mind with representation. But just one of the things that needs to be there is that we're just treated as normal. You don't always have to make our being queer in some manner as the central point of a character. It can be a small part of a character. That doesn't mean like a single kiss that you can cut for the foreign market. That stuff's getting old. I've defended it in the past in the basically on the it's better than nothing basis. And honestly, I think at the time I felt that pretty sincerely. I'm over it. Like either do it <laughs> or back off and quit trying. But I say that, but at the same time, more. You can look at things like GLAAD, which does every year its report on the uh, depictions of and the representation of LGBTQI plus characters in network television, in streaming, and in cable. And they have uh, their 2021-2022 one out. And I was taking a look at their most recent one, and then I compared it to the last few years. Now, things did get better over time. You go back to when they first started tracking, we were looking at representation, and they only measure featured or recurring characters, meaning like part of the main cast or appear more than once. So like one-off, oh, here's my gay friend we'll never see again. They don't count that. But in terms of what they saw when they first started tracking this, it was like 1% of characters. And then for a while, it hovered around 4 to 6%. And for the last four or five years, it has bounced around between around 9% to a high of almost 12. But it's kind of gone up and down, but in that range, but it's kind of stagnated for a while. Now, granted, that measures television, not film, but it's a decent metric overall, partially because television, because there's just more of it, <laughs> There's more shows, there's more casts, there's more characters. Uh, It's honestly usually a little bit ahead of TV. I've mentioned that before elsewhere as well. 
and things have kind of stayed still for a while. And I will be the first to admit, things are better than they used to be. It used to be, you know, you could find one, two, four maybe shows with a regular gay character. And people would point to things like Will and Grace and later on Modern Family and things like that and go, look, look at all this progress. I'm like, okay, that's one depiction. That's great. Um, but like, if you're thinking that's going to satisfy this entire diverse community, I mean, you're, you're wrong. And not because we're unpleasable, because you can't satisfy a diverse group of people with only one character. That's why for as much as some of them complain, cisgender, heterosexual, white, able-bodied men, if they don't like one thing, they might still throw a fit about it, some of them, but they can find something else that they like. They're always very quick to go, okay, well, that sucks, but this is great. Yeah, because you, you had another option, didn't you? We don't have that many. We have more than we used to. I would hate to see the progress stagnate. Now, I have no doubt that some people are going to complain to me about percentages, percentages of the population. First of all, measuring what percentage of the population identifies as some form of LGBTQIA plus is actually very tricky in the first place because it has to be self-reported. Because for many of us, you don't know we're queer unless we tell you. Like, you can look at me and yeah, probably you can guess. But there's a lot out there who nobody knows they are unless they say so. So the fact that it's self-reported means that whatever percentage you are currently seeing when you look up what percentage of the population is LGBTQIA+, that's inherently an undercount because not everybody is out and not everyone feels comfortable to say. So no matter what it is, it's low. But even that low number has been going up. Because despite everything going on in the world, overall, more of us feel safe saying, hey, I exist. So if you want to try and pitch a fit about, well, it's only this small percentage of the population, it is a percentage of the population that we are getting better at counting and is growing, first of all. And secondly, you're not lacking for representation. We are. And if you find our, our being present threatening, that has nothing to do with us and everything to do with you. You'll notice I'm asking for more LGBTQIA plus characters. I'm not asking for fewer cisgender, white, hetero, able-bodied men. I could, but I'm not. Now, there are way too many people who treat everything as a zero-sum game. If we gain something, they must have lost something. <sighs> I don't know how to break you of a mindset like that. I mean, it's a very ingrained capitalist mindset, to be honest, because we are raised to fight for limited resources, such as money. <laughs> so we tend to treat many things as if they are limited, as if somebody else gaining means we either directly lost something or that could have been our gain, but they took it instead. But ultimately, it actually is that simple. Have enough of us appear as characters that when one of them sucks, we can shrug it off and go, eh, that's okay. I got this one over here and that one and that one. Get us to the point where we don't have to care if there is a bad piece of representation because we know it's not the only thing out there. And honestly, as I said, over the last decade or so, the decade that I've been doing this, certainly, we're headed in the right direction, but it has stagnated in the last few years. Don't stop. Go further. Go deeper. Go harder. I...
I'm sorry. I should stop. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, I hope you don't regret doing so. As I said, I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, I may be slightly rusty. <laughs> In any case, whatever your thoughts are on any of this, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills, allows me to do this as my living. There's links to other things in the description that you can help me out with. Um, but don't worry too much about it. What I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful. You are valid. And you are loved. You are the council, and I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Shout out to the patrons who helped make this possible. In particular, I want to thank Robin Moore, Zubin Lafula, Goddess Elida, Tarak, the thing that goes joint in the anime, Ruth, Oliver B, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Pranabilax, The Poodle, Robin Powell, T Love, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casper, Dave Hall, and Rosalind Bennett. There's being able to hear me try and pronounce your name, plus a whole bunch of other rewards on the Patreon. You can check out the tiers, but um, if you're already on the list, thank you so much.